Today I'm going to show you what settings I use in VideoGlide to record gameplay using EasyCap. If you're not sure how to set it up, click the link in the top right corner which will take you to a video which shows you how to set it up. Um, firstly, you're going to want to connect your EasyCap and open up VideoGlide Capture. For some reason, my uh, VideoGlide software wants to flash red, but it doesn't affect recording, so if you have that problem as well, it doesn't, doesn't really do, do anything. So you're going to have to make sure that on Digitalizer's Video Glide is selected and go straight on to Video Settings. So the compression type you're going to want to use is MPEG4 video and frames per second is best and to record the best quality you want to stick the, qual the quality compressor on best as well. There's a few adjustments you can make like hue, saturation, brightness, contrast if you want to fill with those if you're not satisfied with the appearance of your video once you've recorded and you want to make sure your source is selected as S-Video or composite depending on your connection. S-Video is the best, uh, better than compression quality and make sure the final settings are on default. Next you want to go to your sound settings, make sure the compression is on and if you're using a uh, setup similar to mine where the sound will only play through the computer you want to make sure the speaker is turned on whilst recording but if you're not too bothered say you're recording from um, theatre mode in black ops then you don't really need the speaker on so it's up to you what you want to do there um, sample you want to make sure the rate is on 48 kilohertz and the DV audio device is unknown USB audio device Okay. Next, you're going to go to custom size. This is where you can change the resolution of your video. So, if you want to record in uh, 720p, um, the width has got to be 1280 and the height 720. Um, I suggest using this if you don't have software which can cope with 1080p or um, you just want to have a smaller file size for 1080p it's 1920 by 1080 um, I use 1080p to upload my videos so that's my choice um, so I'm just going to record a short video now as a demonstration of what I do next Okay, so now that's recorded, you can just quit video glide capture. However, you can see that for some reason it's no longer widescreen, but it's now become 4 by 3 ratio. I'm not sure why this happens. So, to combat this problem, open up video glide exporter and then export the video through there. Though it can take some time, it will make sure you have high quality video in the end in the right size ratio so you just want to open that up I'll just show you what size it is now it's 40 42.1 megabytes um, this will rapidly increase with the running it through the exporter but I'll show you how I reduce it again after it's been exported so the settings for export well first of all you type in what you want to save it as and whatever you want to save it and then you have to go to options. Okay, you want to make sure these are the same as what we used on the video glide capture, so MPEG4 video, data rate automatic, um, frame rate current, and keyframe automatic, and quality best. Filter you can uh, can choose yourself, but I never seem to use any and size make sure it's HD 920 by 1080 1699 and preserve aspect ratio using letterbox okay and now to the sound settings just sort of leave it as it is and make sure it's on 48 kilohertz 
you can change the settings to best or normal however you want to change it but I don't think it should make too much difference and you might want to put on fast start for internet streaming and save it will now export ok now it's exported you can now close video glide exporter yet again I get this weird red thing on my window and as you can see it's 16 by 9 1080p video which looks very good in my opinion for an easy cap but this is not the end of the process yet but I want to show you so you can just send the old file to the trash as you can see it's increased by quite a lot of the file size to 108.2 megabytes but to decrease that again especially when using large file types like 10 minutes long or something you're going to want to put it through iMovie I've got iMovie 11 so mine can export in 1080p and if not that's why I said earlier to use 720p if you just got iMovie 10 which cannot do that so you just want to import it and we'll also use iMovie to edit the videos so they're perfect for uploading to YouTube adding adding uh, um, you might have to crop it at this stage because you might have black board around the edge and for some reason mine has a weird sort of line bit at the top, I don't know, dotted line so if you just want to crop it before you put it into the uh, project because if you cut it up then they'll all be different they'll be cropped to different sizes and might look a bit messy so I'm just going to drag it all down to the bottom and there's the video I'm going to add a title just for the demonstration purposes calling it quality test ok and now it should be ready to export so you want to share export movie HD 1080p Okay, so now it's exported. iMovie is no longer needed. And as you can see, it's produced a very high quality video in the end. With a very good quality for easy cap, considerably better than and some some dazzles and other types of uh, capture cards. Um also you can see the uh, quality is, I mean, not the quality, the size of the video is reduced quite heavily to 31.8 megabytes from 108. So it's going to be a lot quicker to upload to YouTube. Um, there's a link here to my uh, EasyCap setup video with no splitters in case you're not sure how to do that. That should help you out. And also below there's a link to a Gran Turismo five quality tests just to show you what sort of quality you can achieve when it's uploaded to YouTube. Alright, thank you for watching and please subscribe. Also I forgot to mention if you have any questions or queries please leave them in the comment box below and I'll reply as quickly as possible and hopefully answer your questions. Thanks again.